Hello, welcome back. In our last video, we have seen how to do a data-driven framework. So in that case, what we have given, we are going to give the departure city and destination city in an Excel sheet and our web driver client is going to read that and give us a minimum pair. So recall what we have asked you in the very first place. So we have asked you, you are going to go from San Francisco to a couple of destination cities and you will choose the cheapest flight. So to do that, we have gone to orbis.com. But here is a question. Do you think that orbis.com is going to give us the best deal? So how about another website called travelocity.com? How about an another website called kayak.com? So there are plenty of websites that are there. But is not, is not a good idea to go and search in orbis.com first and then search on travelocity, search on kayak and find out what is the best deal. So that means if I am going through three cities, Okay, then I'm going to search in orbis.com, then I'm going to search the same thing on travelocity.com, then I'm going to search the same thing on kayak.com, or maybe some other website. Okay, so essentially, instead of choosing only from orbis.com, now I'm going to search orbis, travelocity, and kayak. So, total, I'm going to search nine times, and whichever is going to give me the best, the cheapest deal, that is where I'm going to go. So, goal is to extend this program whatever you are seeing here to a new program which is going to read data from an excel set and also it's going to read different things like you know either going to choose from orbit travelocity or kayak and give us the best in this chapter we are going to develop that framework and that framework is called keyword driven framework let's say travelocity.com so this is the flight search procedure you, you click on flight only uh, radio button then you click on the from city to city then you give to date departure date return date and do search now so if you compare whatever we have done in orvis.com probably going to look like same thing we click on flights only then we are giving four inputs departure city arrival city departure date arrival date and then we do the search flight the process of finding flight price is almost the same as travelocity.com or orbis.com. So what I for the simplicity, what I have done here, I write down the steps. Okay. So these are the steps that we are doing in orbis.com and these are the steps that we are going to do travelocity.com. Travelocity is a little bit simpler because we do not have to do this flights kick on flight because whenever we are going to travelocity.com website, by default it has already chosen the flights which was not the case in orvis.com. If you go to orvis.com by default, it is choosing the hotels only as the default. Okay, so therefore, whenever we're going to do the travelocity.com, we do not have to do this click, click on flight only radio button. So, first thing is, we have to open the Firefox uh, browser and go to an URL. Then we enter a city, two city, leave that, return that, and click the search flight, and then store price. Okay, so these are the steps that we are going to do. So let's write our web driver backed client that is going to drive Travelocity website. I created a Java class called Travelocity.java. So this is the public static environment and then I'm just going to write all the steps. So step one is open Firefox browser and this code is going to do that. I created a web driver object and I open a new Firefox driver. Now step two, get the website. So how to get wd dot there is a API called get and that get is going to take the string and the string is http once this web page is rendered how to locate this element from simple click on inspect with firebug looks like very fast thing there's an ID is available okay so therefore we are going to locate this element by ID so let's say wd dot find element and how do I find an element by dot ID okay so by ID and then what is the string the string is f o f r o m okay so first i'm going to do if anything is already there i want to clear that okay then if the action is clear because if anything is already there like right? if somebody some some data is already there i need to clear and then what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this thing i have to do type i have to send keys you know i want to send this value right so let's say send the api is send keys and what i send keys let's say i want to send sfo 
this is the city that I'm going to send. So similarly, I need to identify two city. So inspect element. So it looks like F4 2. So so the equivalent code for that is this. Okay. So I find the element by ID and the name is F4 dash 2. First I clear and then I enter TFW. Okay. So now how to locate this uh, departure date? So right click inspect element. So it looks like they are also use ID. Okay. So same thing I'm going to do the same procedure for departure and return and I'm going to clear and then I'm going to enter some date. Alright, so so this is the equivalent code for that. Okay, so the to to locate the element from that, this is the element to locate. Then we clear it, and then we we enter this data, the 17 December 2012, and coming back on 27 December 2012, and then the last thing what we're going to do, we're going to search now. Right, to search now, let's inspect with Firebug. We do not have any ID, we do not have any name here, but we can always construct an XPath for that. Okay, so to construct an expert, just if you forgot, refer to chapter number two, or else this is the one that it's going to do. We do we, ele we wd dot find element, and how do I find element? I find element by using xpath, and the xpath for this is based on this HTML. I constructed this one. So now with this click, it's supposed to search now with this data. So let's do it one time manually. SFO dfw then date search now so now it's actually searching you know it still is searching you know it's the page is not loaded so i have to wait until i see this number here okay so recall whatever we have done in our last thing so we have created a web driver wait event so here is a sample code so let's say let's create this web driver wait event and then what are you going to do we are going to use that wait object here and wait until what? Wait until we see this number. Okay. So the the equivalent code for that is going to be like this. Okay. So the, so so I'm going to I'm going to use that wait event right now. So I'm going to wait until what? Until I until I see a element. And what is that element? That element is this. So I'll go inspect Firebug and looks like I have to see until this. HTML rendered. So here the ID is dynamic. Okay, so let's not use that. We can always use this class is equal to AM2 to find out the XPath. So based on this thing, the equivalent XPath will be something like this. So we we'll put it inside double quotes here. So this is the XPath. All right. So after the search uh, rendered, then we are going to see this number and how to get the text. Okay. So to locate this element, we have already done this thing. This is how you locate. Then let's get that element. So wd dot find element. And how do you find element? We are finding element by xpath. Okay. So by xpath, the xpath string, the xpath string is going to be like this. So this is the xpath string. Then so get text. And that is going to return a string. And that string we will store in price. And let's print now. Right, so this is the code that we wrote to automate Travelocity website. Just see if this thing's working or not. Let's run. All right, so it's opening Travelocity.com and then putting the data and then searching and it's waiting right now because we are giving this statement. Okay, the execution finishes. So, so in the in the price, whenever we print this statement, we are getting 369. Also, we are getting this extra thing, which is called total per person, and then, ex, then that that is a line, new line. Okay. So, basically, what we can do, whatever the string that we got, we can just basically do something like you know replace. If any dollar sign, make it null. If any comma, then make it null. If there is any total, the string that you are seeing is total, then make it null. If you are seeing a a new line which is slash n uh, I have to escape that one because we cannot do it in string so I have, I have a double slash n then if you're seeing this thing then make it null then per person make it null so now if I run this program it's just going to give me 369 the reason I'm doing this thing because I want to convert this thing to a double variable because that is why I need to compare so with this we have our travelocity program ready.